Now, call on inflation was something that we've written about all the way back through 2016, 2017, about these secular disinflationary forces in the world that was going to make it very difficult to uh, you know, get this runaway inflation like we've had in previous cycles. And that's broadly been proven now over the course of time. Interest rates are still uh, on their journey to resetting lower. We've been raising them in the United States since 2015, although the majority of that happened in 2017, 2018. And now, you know, already we're going to be cutting interest rates in the middle of 2019. And we feel that that's still got quite a bit of runway to complete on. Clearly, we need to think through what type of cutting cycle might this be. If it's a cutting cycle like uh, 1987, 1995, 1998, they were insurance rate cutting cycles where we didn't have an economic recession thereafter uh, and, and asset markets kept on keeping on. Uh, but if it's something darker like uh, you know, a 2000 or a 2007, uh, 1989, then we're going to need material interest rate cuts. And in those cycles, we've needed 300 to 500 basis points of interest rate cuts. Now we're starting with only 250 available. So the insurance rate cutting cycles have historically been 75 to 100. Uh, if we needed to use more, it's been 300 plus. And so there's a lot of discussion in the market at the moment about what kind of rate cutting cycle will this become. Clearly, if it is that insurancy cycle, then it's probably pretty good for risk markets and, and they'll enjoy that. We've written a lot about that over the course of this year, about this huge dispersion in, in risk market performance. The irony being that the worse the data and the macro environment has been, if that central bank safety net is under the market and that accommodation is expected, then a lot of risk markets really love that. And we're seeing equities have a fantastic year as a result. Uh, but clearly, if there's a darker cycle to that, and that really is led by the credit cycle, then we could be looking at something more akin to, uh, you know, not as, as severe as 2008, we don't think, but um, you know, certainly, uh, you know, darker and deeper, and there could be some capital destruction, which we haven't really seen for a, for a good period. We've had little flirtations with it, like Q4 of 2018, where people got a stark reminder of what is actually behind that curtain without this constant volatility suppression and accommodation from central banks. Yeah, look, it's a really difficult call at this stage. There is some delinquency starting to rise in parts of the credit complex that we monitor. And that's something that we need to see. It's not something that 25 basis points or 50 basis points is going to fully redress. You know, the buildup of those rate hiking cycles takes a very long time. If we think back to the last cycle, the Fed were hiking from June 2004 to June 2006. But it's those rate hikes that accumulate that cause a big asymmetric problem in 2008. We've really only gone through that hiking cycle in full in 2017 and 18, but we're starting to see some of those delinquencies just lift a little bit. Now, there's nothing hugely worrying there yet, but they are very big super tankers of, of, of performance to turn, and the deterioration is, is noted. Now, if that starts to accelerate, we would certainly have a lot of cause for concern. There is an enormous amount of corporate credit debt that needs to be rolled forward and reissued as we look into 2020, 2021. And clearly, if there's a loss of confidence, we can see that market jam up very, very quickly, as we saw in the late part of 2018. You know, in global bond markets, you know, three, three and a half times the size of global equity markets, we did not issue a single high yield security in December 2018. The markets were simply closed. For those that need to roll forward, and that really is the oil of the financial system for corporates to be able to continuously borrow, they're not always borrowing with the, uh, you know, with the idea of paying in full, repaying in full in two or three years time, then they need to be able to access that refinancing mechanism. And that is a cause for concern, given some of the structural weaknesses that are in the corporate credit market as we see it.